Thank you for joining me, Debs Cooper, Global Stressologist. Here we are again to talk about something inspiring. And this, look, I'm, I actually am sure I say this is a goodie. Even when I do my podcast, I'm like, this is a goodie, this is a goodie. But this is a goodie. This is seriously a goodie enough that can shift your mindset very quickly and turn from the positive to the negative, if you like like that but take you from and i said this the other day to somebody take you from a funk to a hunk even the girls you can go from a funk to a hunk that's okay so today i'm going to share about uh quality questions that are gonna you can ask yourself daily or throughout the day or once a day or once a week whatever fits in your schedule and it just raises your level and when i talk about raises your level it makes you aware of what's going on around you and it can shift your mindset just as quickly as this, just as quickly as this, when you're ready to hear it. And that's the key there is when you're ready to hear it. Because often we hear this, but we don't actually hear it in our heart explosion. So I would love to know where you are here in the world. And if you're here watching live, because I can see people are live, let me know who you are and, and what's going on around you would be awesome. So I'm going to say, as I jump off camera again, grab yourself a pen, a pen, a biro, and get ready with your notes, because I'm going to be straight to the point on these. So today, like I talked about, is questions to ask yourself that are going to change your mindset and raise your levels. Raise your levels, because we all want a little bit of level raveling, don't we? No matter where you are in the world, it's all about actually just leveling up. And when I say where you are in the world, not, not necessarily where you are in the world where I'm in New Zealand, but where you're actually uh, at playing in this world, the key is to what can you do to up level. Hey, hey, Aaron, I know you'll be sitting outside in the sun over there in Australia as I've got my little wheat sack on my lap just to keep me warm. Mm, difference between New Zealand and Australia right now. So let's crack on. Be aware that your past stories, and this is so significant, those past stories that we've had get attached to us. And not only do those past stories attach to us, it is like lint. And it just gets attached to us and it sticks and it embeds into our skin, it embeds into our soul, it embeds into the stories we pass on with other people. So what I'm going to give you today is ways to change those past stories in your mind. Because past stories can be hurtful and they can actually be yuck. And when I talk about yuck, they can actually be really yuck that can immobilize you and stop you in fear not trusting people, moving on. So if you think about, and I'm going to go straight there, you think about someone who's, um, people say affair, they've had an affair outside the relationship, or I, I say dabbled outside the relationship. They've gone beyond that heart connection you had, and they've gone to something else, and they've done that. So when you have that, you as a person, and it's happened to you or around you, you as a person have to deal with that. You clearly do. I dated somebody who said to me, all my past partners have gone and been with my best friends. Well, that's a great start to a relationship because then I'm dealing with, oh my gosh, that's not something I'm going to do or consciously be aware I'm going to do. But I've then attached myself to a relationship where somebody has a past story that is so hurtful that's attached to them. And that was a heck of a lot. Then, you know, there was, when I found out a little bit more, there was quite a few um, best friends mm -hmm, that had dabbled with, um, you know, my partner's, my ex-partner's um, people. And so with that, instantly, I'm coming in on a level that I would like to change that because I thought that's what I did. I want to change that and show you that not everybody goes and shags your best mate. I can be trusted, I am somebody here who's worthy, etc, etc. So already I'm going in as an underdog, having to prove myself and my loyalty, not only to my partner, but also to myself. That's damn hard for somebody. Not only is it hard for the partner, thank goodness the partner told me, uh, and we're still best friends now, 16, 17 years down the track. Not only am I grateful that they've told me that stuff, but I had to go in and work really hard to build that trust. That is not mine to do. 
That is not, so point one, their stories are their stories, your stories are your own. So be aware of those. I'm definitely going to help you some questions as well, but just open your eyes to those past stories because that story wasn't mine. It got thrown at me. I took it upon myself. They threw that mud and I smothered myself in that mud and then I had to prove myself. And I had to not only try and chip away at the, that mud that was stuck, you know what mud's like when it, it's wet, it's great, and then it dries and it cracks and it hurts and everything, everything becomes incredibly painful. So be aware of your stories. Be aware of your stories and other people's stories and how much you're letting that uh, attach to you because it's really hard to move from that space. And it just doesn't help the relationship in the present time. Now, I'm sure if I asked everyone to put their hand up, uh, even though we're online, who has experienced that, where your partner, and that is also your intimate partner, but also your children from school, or your family, or your grandmother, or your grandmother's mother's told you a story, and you've gone, oh, I don't like that, and you've allowed that to attach to you. So who here has actually done that? Because I know myself, I've fully attached to other people's stories or even my own and I've tried to share my stories and people have shut it down or they've listened to it. So we all know we've had those stories because what that one I just gave you is a really common story that goes out there. So to shift that story right alone, for, to shift that story is how did that serve you back then? How is that of value to you? How is that a benefit? How did that uplevel your world? How did that help your world? And saying that, people can go, oh, that didn't. So I can go back to my relationship that I had, and I can go back to that moment when I was told that, and I can look at the value of what that did to me. It definitely made me up-level. It definitely uh, made me open my eyes to uh, my partner's friends, <laughs> definitely who were some still in that circle and some not. But it just made me more aware of being in a grown-up situation. Now, we're talking about 20-odd years ago, so it was definitely something that uh, I was still learning a lot. But if you can go back to that moment, that past story, and you can look at how can that up-level my world from that incident that happened, no matter how icky it is, there's always value in that story. You know when you don't get a job and you go, oh, that job was totally for me, that job was totally for me, and people go, don't worry, one door shuts and another one opens. You're like, I don't care. That's the type of stuff I'm talking about right now because there is a better opportunity coming around for that job. So go back, although you don't often know it at the time, go back to that moment and look at how did that serve your world back then how did that serve your world back then because if you can do that there's an absolute shift ugh, in your energy and in your space so that's obviously number one number two is starts with g who's having a guess what g would be g is gratitude 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 and if you have never watched me before you'll hear me talk about it pretty much on most calls gratitude means you wake up and and gratitude you go to bed at gratitude throughout the day you click into your gratitude and it's just about being grateful that's it if you don't want if you want to reframe gratitude what does it mean just about being grateful what are the blessings so when you wake up in the morning you know you wake up with a different energy instead of waking up going oh I've slept through my alarm I've had such a rough sleep wow I've just woken up my body obviously needed that sleep wow, I'm a little bit late doing this, I'll just cut this out or I'll communicate with my boss if I'm going into work or whatever. What am I grateful for right now? I'm grateful that my body screamed, I need help, and it listened instead of head. That listens because our head is the thing that we change all the time. So I'm grateful for that. At night, what am I grateful for? Oh, my boss called me into a meeting and I felt really uncomfortable, I felt nervous, but I put more uh, attitude and energy into the going to the meeting. When the meeting happened, it was only two minutes to check in and see if I was okay. Isn't it funny? Our mind can run these marathon stories way more. So at night time, what am I grateful for? What are you grateful for? What can you be grateful for for your day? Right now, I'm, gr I'm incredibly grateful for the internet that it worked because probably 40 minutes ago, I was having a heck of a time trying to get this to even load. So I'm grateful for the internet. I'm grateful I've got um, daylight that I'm not having to use my ring light and I've actually got light enough that works for me. I'm grateful I got to catch up with my hairdresser this morning and I haven't seen her in about five weeks and we had a great chin wag. I'm grateful for a lot of things right now. I'm grateful the dogs are at the groomer and I can have my door open. I'm grateful for a lot of things. So if you can just think about those things, no matter what happens. So I say, 
everything that makes your butt clench. Yes, I did say your butt clench, because you know when something emotional happens, well, maybe it's just my butt, is it your butt or not? But mine goes, oh, I don't know how I'm feeling about this. Anything that makes that physical symptom, let's put that, any emotion that has a physical symptom, oh, it's a great job to get out that pen and think about the things you're grateful for in that situation. Uh, growing up, my daughter and I used to say, what are we grateful for at the dinner table? What are you grateful for in your day? And it became a whole thing. So you get to know what your children are doing during the day. It's a great little thing. Or when they get in the car and they talk about their day, what are you grateful for? Now, I'm not saying if someone gets in the car and they go, this has happened, this has happened, and you go, say, what are you grateful for? Don't do that. That's not a wise thing to do. Is sit and hold that space and listen to them. And then you can say little things. You can say little things like, well, I guess your day's not that bad. You're still here in the car. You've still got a mouth that's sharing with me. You've still got this, etc., etc. So just be aware of those things uh, that go on around you, but gratitude is a great one. The other thing is language. And I know if any of my people who really know me closely go, language, what is she going to say? What is she going to say? So it is not the words that usually come out my mouth when I'm all fired up and I'm racing things so quickly. I'm going to use the word language, and then I'm going to go reframing. Because when you change that language in your mind and you reframe those things, there's a different level to you. And uh, recently I was talking to a client who was saying, I've got so much debt with the ATO, which is the tax department in Australia. I've got so much debt, I've got so much debt. And he, he just didn't know where he was at. He was debt, 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 debt. So I said, let's just pause for a moment and let's change that word debt. Because every time he said debt, his butt clenched. And he felt physically sick. I've got this debt with the ATO and I don't know what's happening in this debt, debt, debt. Now the word debt makes me cringe. It just makes you cringe. So if you can change that word debt, and I talked to another client and we did the same thing, and he called it an extended love loan. Oh, I've got an extended love loan with the ATO. Or I've got a personal investment with the ATO. Look how that just changes. Does that just not give you a warm fuzzy, changing your debt word? The other one I giggled at this morning when I was talking to um, uh, somebody was about gossip. Gossip, gossip, gossip. And I said, yes, this person's an absolute gossip. Imagine if you reframe that, and it's just reframe using that language, to, oh, they're an educator of the neighborhood. Hmm. Oh, my neighbor gossips a lot. I oh, know they're an educator of the neighborhood. Or my boss gossips a lot about the staff. Oh, no, they're an educator on the people at work. Just that educator on changes that word from gossip and it just allows you to feel a little bit better about yourself and it's just reframing those words so a great one oh i'm sick i'm so sick i'm so sick i'm so sick wow my body withstands all sorts of things that are going on right now my body can withstand so much right now or this is my favorite i'm so fat nothing fits me nothing fits me wow check out these new humps and bumps if you say humps and bumps, but check out these bumps and humps. Just changing that and reframing instead of saying I'm fat and nothing fits me. Check out these new humps and bumps. I wonder how they're going to get into these clothes. Or check out these humps and bumps or bumps and humps. Um, I wonder if I'm going to have to get a new top for this. It's just reframing it. And when you reframe, your shoulders feel very different and you come back with a different level of certainty. The other one uh, is not a swear word, and it's starting with the word C. And do we know what this one is? This one is called comparing. Who am I comparing myself to? Who am I comparing myself with? Who am I comparing? Because when you compare with somebody else, you're minimizing yourself. You're going, oh, they have this amazing thing, and I don't. You're forgetting that. So there's two questions you can ask yourself around comparison. And it's, where do I have this? So you may think that they are a genius in delivering this content. You may think, well, she's knowledgeable about everything. So where do you have knowledge that you share about everything? And it's going to be in what's important to you. So uh, I can definitely talk about mindset challenges. I can definitely talk about health blood challenges. I can talk about stress in the body. I'm a stressologist. It's clearly something I do. But if you ask me, uh, where's my genius in gardening? I don't even know the difference between a weed and a plant. Well, some I do, but there's definitely some that I don't know the difference between a weed and a plant. And I'm not interested in it because it doesn't light me up. So when you compare someone, look at where do you have this, whatever this is that you're comparing, and where is the other side? 
because we often only choose to see one side of people but knowing we have the positive and the negative about us but we also have the left and right so looking what we both have both sides so i may be creative in in delivering uh, stressology to you but i'm not that creative in the garden so i definitely have the other side so just open your eyes to that the other one i'm going to talk about is where does this light me up and when i talk about where does this light me up if it's not glitter bombing yourself because i talk about that if you're not glitter bombing yourself in this or anything it's not for you it's not for you so uh you will have heard me say the word good for me is this good for me is this good for others and do i want to do it if all three are a yeah 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 do it if you've got two and a maybe it's not for you right now right now it's not for you so if you don't glitter bomb yourself you're going to go down so there's a great tool that we have for time management and it's the four d's the four d's and it's do it okay that's pretty logical take action defer meaning put it off delay it whatever just park it delegate oh i'm the master of delegating uh when you delegate you've just got to keep a little eye on things but have that trust delegate or drop and when i say drop delete it get rid of it done Psh, finito put it in the rubbish and it's done you know if you've got 500 emails and you're and it's overwhelming for you just mark them all on read and wait for them to come back to you and ask you again that's it that's it just easier just easier because if it's not lighting you up and it's putting you down in that heavy funky space it's not worth it so the four d's d d d d d d d d d d d the other thing is if you're in a funk if you're in a funk and you're feeling heavy because that's what we're talking about today um don't look at why am i like this why am i like this because if you're on a why you're going to go on that hamster wheel and we all know what happens on the hamster wheel we all fall off legs in the air and we just can't get anywhere so don't look at that look at what can i do to change my state that's a great one tony robbins change your state he jumps in the air and punches and shouts something and that that's not me i'm not going to do that i'm lower put my flipping arm out or something for me so i shake it off or i ground myself i do whatever it is that lights me up and keeps me oh whether that's lighting a candle i've got some beautiful candles or spray perfume or whatever when you're in that funk just change that state change whatever it is around you and it has to be something that lights you up so i can tell you a lot of things to do but it has to be something that you like to do i'm not going to say spray perfume if you're allergic to perfume like that's going to be absurd don't go doing that stuff and i've just got a couple of other things and one was people <laughs> people if they don't light them up if they don't light you up let them go let them go be busy if you have to say no this doesn't work for me right now this is not working uh, i can't meet you or something just the more busier you are the less you're going to get attached to that drama that's going to come at you so stay in your lane stay in your zone stay in your glitter bomb area and you're going to be more fulfilled because there's nothing more exciting than being around people who are fulfilled because you know that you know what it's like when you're around people who are actually fulfilled and alive and real and i've just got two more so today is the day we just heard about queen elizabeth ii passing over and this is a beautiful one uh to be aware of because the question is have i done everything i can right here right now with my life so if we asked her had she done everything she possibly could there might be a yes there might be a maybe there might be a no and you just don't know when your time's up so have i done everything i can right here now with my life and if the answer is no because i guarantee the answer is going to be no i don't know anyone who said yes write a plan time frame it and get moving take action because there's nothing worse than just going boom it's done and people go oh i know they wanted to do this let's go do that for them that's beautiful but be aware of queen elizabeth ii you know rest in peace queen because her time's up right here right now on this planet and did she do everything she could i don't know that's for her and her family and those closest to her but have you done everything you can with your life 
right now if you were to pass today? Mine is absolutely not. Absolutely not. And the last one, I'm just jumping into the last one, and the last one is gratitude again. Gratitude. Remember that gratitude in the morning and night and throughout the day? Be grateful for what you have. Be grateful for what you don't have because you have it. You're the only one who has it. You're the only one who can change things. It's all about you. You, you, you. You're here on this world to make a difference. Go do it. Go do it. And that's me, talking as quick as I possibly could, ish. So they're the questions to ask yourself daily to, to change this. Change this because otherwise you're just going to be trapped into that funk mode. So let's change that funk to hunk and let's get you moving. If you would like to add anything in that I've missed out, let me know what you do. That would be super awesome because I love knowing what people do. And I go, oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's a goodie. So let me know. Thank you. And thank you for being here today. Thank you for sharing your time with me. So if you loved today, or if you liked it just a little bit, if you liked it just a little bit, just a little bit, if you liked it, the next step for you is to share this. Share this, tag your friends, get them into the group, just share, 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 share. So we can, as a group and a community, we can up-level our awareness, not only for me and you, but those around you, because it's something pretty inspiring when you're hanging out with inspiring people. So that's me, Debs Cooper, over and out. I want to thank you for joining me today. I will see you next week with another little goodie. Thank you. See ya.